former President Trump inviting Haley supporters to join the MAGA movement. He invited them in a, a Truth Social post today. So let's chew on this. We have Dave Bossi, president of Citizens United. He's a former Trump uh, 2016 deputy campaign manager and co-chair of the RNC convention. We have to be nice to him. And we have Washington <laughs> Times opinion editor, Fox News contributor, uh, Charlie Hurt. And we have Katie Pavlich, townhall.com editor and Fox News contributor. Um, it's clear they lost your Fox News contributor, but I put it back in. It's like, but how does Dave Bossy get the longest title? Can of you all believe it? He has so many, he has all these titles. It's really because cool. he won an election. Yeah. It's, it's, it's because yeah, okay, it's won so the true. and he's running Thank the convention, you. so we're all okay, sucking so we're, up to him. Uh, Trying to get good seats, unlike where the Vermont Republicans are going to be. They're going to be public telescope. Yeah. You can see the stage. Uh, that's so very that's good. Cool. So Bossy, uh, I'll just try to skim read this thing. Uh, this is Trump on Nikki Haley today, Truth Social. Nikki Haley got trounced last night, record-setting fashion, despite the fact that Democrats are allowed to vote in Vermont, as we just pointed out. Blah, blah, blah. He, then he says, at this point, I hope she stays in the race and fights it out <laughs> in the end. Well, that's not happening. And then he says, he's, this is the key point, Dave. I would further like to invite all the Haley supporters to join the greatest movement in the history of the nation. All right, so not Ms. Haley per se, but uh, the Haley supporters, uh, David Bossy. How does that work? Well, what'd you read into that whole statement? I think it's an incredibly smart thing to do. It's 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 reaching out to those supporters of Nikki Haley's, asking him to join uh, his his movement. And and look, the conservatives, whether it was in 2000, 2008 with John McCain, uh, Mitt Romney, George Bush, for that matter. Cons the conservative movement was always assumed that we would fall in line. And this year, we have the establishment saying, hey, we're not going to fall in line. That's what Nikki Haley basically was saying. And now it's become a binary choice. It is between Donald Trump's uh, effort to save America and the carnage that is America under Joe Biden. And the American people now will have a simple choice between Donald Trump's Save America, um, Make America Great Again agenda versus more of the socialist agenda of Joe Biden. And that's really what this is going to be about. And that's why those Nikki Haley supporters are going to come to join the Trump movement over time. I mean, Charlie, I just, um, you know, you look at the polls, at least the New York Times poll, of those who voted for Trump in 2020, 97 percent are going to vote for him again. Only 83 percent are going to vote for uh, Biden. By the way, Biden lost huge chunks in his primaries. He sure did. Uh, right? I mean, people that either voted for the little candidates or voted um, whatever it's called, um, un unaffiliated or we don't like Joe Biden or whatever the, the enumerator was. The point is, this unity stuff, I keep hearing from certain former campaign managers of certain Republican presidents, I don't want to name names, but you know <laughs> who I'm talking about, that we can't unify the, the party. What do you make of these arguments? Oh, I think that that's, uh, I think that, the, you know, the media has spent so much time focusing on uh, the divisions in the Republican Party, and they completely ignore mm. real profound divisions in mm -hmm. the Democrat Party. But, uh, but no, and, and, you know, the idea that somehow Nikki Haley, that, that Donald Trump is the one that needs to sort of break bread, uh, extend the olive branch to Nikki Haley, I don't think that, I think she's overstating how much her influence is within the party. You know, the, the fact that there have been, there are these people who don't like Donald Trump in the party and in politics, no, duh. That's been the truth from the <laughs> right. beginning, which is the key to his popularity. It's why everybody outside of Washington, outside of politics, loves the guy. Um, and so, I, you know, I think that, that, and of course, half of them were, are Democrats anyway, Democrat voters who are playing in these other, but you know, another thing, I get why people don't like Trump because he says things, but you got to admit, the guy is so funny. When he talks about Nikki Haley uh, in record-setting <laughs> fashion, losing, as if she set out to set these new records of losing, which, by the way, she did. She broke a lot of records for losing. It was extraordinary. If she, I don't know if she meant to or not, but she's going to go into the history books for some of these losses. Yeah, I guess she will. You know, Katie Pavlich, um, it's not your father's or grandfather's Republican Party. It isn't the Republican. I worked for Ronald Reagan. That was 40 years ago. It's a, Reagan started this stuff, but it's different. This is a populist party. This is a party going at, you know this, this is a party going after 
Blacks, Hispanics. I was reading, uh, quoting from Jason Riley's article in the Wall Street Journal today about how Trump is piling up Hispanic numbers and Black American numbers. Mm -hmm. And the basic point is they want pay increases, not pay cuts. And uh, Biden has delivered them pay cuts. So the issue of unity, I think, misses the point. Trump is going to build a bigger coalition. I mean, that's unity, and yeah. it's based on success. Well, look, every election is going to be a tight election, especially in places like Michigan and Wisconsin. So getting and gobbling up as many votes as you possibly can is obviously a good thing. But you're right, Larry. You know, Donald Trump has treated this primary like the general election from the beginning. And I thought the meeting that he had with the Teamsters a couple of weeks ago was really interesting in Washington, D.C. Uh, in Michigan, he has you know, an opportunity to peel off a lot of these voters who are very upset with Joe Biden's electric vehicle mandates, which mm -hmm. are going to put a lot of people out of work not to mention making their lives more expensive. And then, you know, they talk a lot about the unity of the Republican Party, but you mentioned, and Charlie mentions, the dysfunction of the Democratic Party. It's been completely underreported how many people have voted uncommitted against Joe Biden. 100,000 people in Michigan, mm. 20,000 people in North Carolina. In Michigan in particular, you know, Joe Biden ran the first time as, well, the third time, I believe it was, for president, uh, as this moderate unifier who was going to, you know, bring the country together. And he's really been a far-left president. And now he has this problem in a place like Michigan that he has to win if he wants to win re-election, where he has to kowtow to Rashida Tlaib, who is a member of the squad promoting a pro-terrorism agenda in that state. So he's the one who has to figure out how he's going to keep that coalition together while also not allowing coalitions that have been typically for Democrats, black voters, Hispanic voters, from falling apart as well. I mean, you look at the fact that he's down to 66 percent among African-American voters, 49 percent with Hispanics, with the border being an issue they think is helping them with that demographic. Um, and, you know, they don't have a lot of places to go in terms of the timing here before the election. All right. Well, I'm we're having so much fun. I want this panel to hold over because I got a couple other things I want to hash through. <laughs> and uh, we all have to be nice to David Bossy because he's running the convention. <laughs> but we, we save tight, please. Go get a cup of coffee.